Mastering is the process of taking your mix and adding some final tweaks such as EQ, compression and limiting to make sure the volume is at a competitive level and your song sounds the best that it can. Now, some folks might say that you can't master in GarageBand on your iPhone and your iPad, but I like a challenge. So in this video, I'm going to show you the method that I use to master my tracks here in GarageBand. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music and GarageBand is one of the platforms I use the most. So if you're into tips and tricks and tutorials all about mobile recording, then consider subscribing to the channel. But for now, let's jump right down in because we've got some work to do to master my latest song. Here's the song that I'm currently working on here in GarageBand. Now, if you've missed the previous videos where I showed the recording, the writing, the mixing of this track, there's a playlist linked up there and down in the description that you can jump in to catch up. But assuming you know where we're at here, let's take a quick listen to the mix. So it's coming together okay. Let's jump into a middle section here. Day, but we've been down this so we've got a ballad song here, we've got a song that uh, has guitars, got acoustic guitar, piano, a little sort of string and horn solo in the middle here, and some drums and electric piano and a few other instruments. So we've mixed all these together and we're happy with our final mix. So let's now start on the mastering process here in GarageBand. Step one, we want to actually export this mix as a stereo WAV file. So to do that, we've come out here. Here it is, Wasting My Time version 10. I'm going to tap select and I'm going to select on this file, then tap the share button in the bottom left corner. I'm going to tap on song and then I'm going to make sure that the highest quality WAV file is selected, which is a 44.1 kilohertz, 24 bit, and I'm going to tap the share button. It's now going to ask me where I want to share this to. So I want to actually save this out as a WAV file. So what I'm going to do is tap open in. What it's going to now do is export this song. This will take around a minute to two minutes, depending on which iPhone or iPad you're using and the length of your song. And once this is exported, we'll return and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, that is done. So we can now tap on save to files here, which is the option that we want. And it will now ask us where we want to save this to. So I'm going to put it right here on my iPad in my GarageBand folder. So I'm going to tap the add button and that has now added that WAV file to my GarageBand folder to help us with the next step, which is where we're going to bring that WAV file into a new project. So let's do that now. So let's tap on the big plus button here to create a new document here in GarageBand. Now I'm just going to, doesn't really matter what I select, I always just use Audio Recorder just to get a track up here because we're not going to actually use any of this. We're just going to tap on the track view icon here because we're going to import our audio file, our WAV file into this new track. Now the first thing you want to check to do is that you've got automatic bars on here because if we import this file right now, it's only going to have the first eight bars worth of our song, which is not going to be ideal. So we're going to tap on the plus button here in the top right in our song sections and we're going to tap this first section and then make sure that automatic is turned on. This way, the first thing that we import here, which will be our WAV file, will determine the length of the overall song. So what we want to do now is we want to tap on the loops icon in the top right up here so that we can go to our files. Now I'm just going to exclude this. It just means I've, I've stored some files all over the place. So don't worry if you get that message. But here we are. Now the reason I put it straight into GarageBand is this is where all of our files are stored that we can import straight in. Now if they're not in that location, no problem. You can hit that browse button and you can browse to wherever they are and import them. But this just saves that step. So here it is, wasting my time version 10.wave. I'm to tap and hold and drag this into a blank channel here just to make sure that we've got no processing on it whatsoever and then if we pinch in we can see that we have our entire waveform going across the screen here and we're ready to start mastering this track. Before we continue, I'm just going to pause quickly to show you what this waveform is looking like here in Audio Share, which is another great app. It costs about $3 to buy, but it's well worth having if you want to do things like this. So here's what our waveform looks like here. And you'll notice that what GarageBand does is it does something called auto normalization, which means it takes the loudest part of your track and raises that up to zero dB. Now, this isn't ideal for mastering because ideally you want to have a bit more headroom. But the good news here is if you look at where my track 
track is actually peaking here. It's only in a few very small places, so it's not going to be too bad. However, if you had a track that actually was already looking something like this, then you're going to have trouble. You're going to have zero headroom. So this is a mastered version of another song I have. But if you do have a song that sounds like this, you can use another hack, which is to actually reduce the volume of the overall track before you export it. And I'm going to link to a video that shows you how to do that to use the FX track to reduce the overall volume because then you'll export and you'll get something that looks more like that than the previous one. So if you've got these big sausages, these big things that are, are really full, then you're not going to be able to master. You've got no room left to master. So if you are having that issue, if you're finding that your tracks are too loud, turn them down using the FX before you export and start your mastering. All right, back to our process. The next step in our process here is to trim the start and the finish. So we want to make sure that our song starts. So we had this lead in in our original mix. We want to reduce that down here. So we probably want it about here. Let's just hit play. Yeah, round about that. We also want to turn our metronome off because that's not going to be needed. This isn't going to be on the grid because we haven't worried with any, with, with any of that sort of stuff. We've just got a WAV file in here. We're not going to use any of the bars or the grid or anything like that. So let's just come in here. We're going to tap, tap again and go split. We're going to split that off, tap that, tap it again, and delete. Get rid of that first section. We can then tap and drag this to the front. Let's just listen and make sure this is about the right lead-in time. Probably just a little bit too much still, so let's just remove a little bit more. Now, you don't want it to be right up here because a lot of your streaming services, if you're going to release this, will sort of fade in and it'll cut off the very start of your song. So we probably want it around about here. Let's just split this again and tap and then tap on our first section, tap again and delete, and move this here. So now it'll be... Yeah, that's it. You want it probably just under a second there. And now let's go to the end of the track. So we're just zooming in here by pinching and by pulling our fingers apart here. So let's listen to the end. So there's our fade out. And... Yeah, so we go round right about there. So we probably don't need it any further than that. So we'll just, this time we'll just grab the handle and drag that back into there. So there you go. Now, what we want to do also is make sure that this file's not going to then have any extras. So we want to make sure it only goes up to bar 104. So let's tap the plus button here. And where it's automatic here, let's take automatic off and let's drop this back to 104. And that's going to give us just the right amount of lead out time there on our track, which is exactly what we want. So now that we've tied it up and trimmed our track, let's get into the actual plugins and processing. All right, we've done the setting up. It's time for the fun part. So we're going to tap on the plugins and EQ section here, go into our little mixer and then tap plugins and EQ. First thing I'm going to do is remove this effect EQ. It's on all of your presets, even the clean one. I don't really know why. We're going to tap edit here and I'm just going to delete it and get rid of it entirely. So now we've got a completely blank track with zero processing, but we have our noise gate, which we'll probably not be using on this one. We have a compressor, which we may use to add a little bit of compression to our master. And then we have our visual EQ, which helps us EQ our final master. And there's other plugins that we can add in here, which is what we're going to talk about now. So the number one plugin that's kind of essential to your mastering process is a limiter. Now, GarageBand doesn't have a built-in limiter, but the iPhone and the iPad actually do. They have some uh, Apple AU plugin effects that are kind of hidden. Now, there's a video that's going to be linked up there that shows you, if you don't have these plugins, how to enable them. So you may need to check that one out. Pause this one, go over and do that and watch that video so that you can actually do that. But once you've done that, or maybe you've already got them, if we tap on the edit option here and we tap plus, we're going to tap on this bottom plus button here. Now over here in audio unit extensions, as well as all of the downloaded and purchased ones that I have here, you'll notice all of these orange ones that all start with AU. Now these are basically brought across from GarageBand on the Mac, but they're not really designed for GarageBand on iOS. So the interfaces on these are pretty ordinary, but they do the job. And you've got a bunch of in here like bandpass filters and dynamics processes, and you can experiment and play with any of these. But what we're going to use for this one is the P limiter because this is going to help us make sure that we raise up our overall volume without actually clipping and distorting. So let's tap the peak limiter to add that one in there. And then just like our EQ, we can tap on that and we can start adjusting and we can use this, this pre-gain here to actually increase the volume of our overall track. 
Now at this point you might be saying, Pete, can't I just use the volume slider here to increase the volume of my track? Well, you can, but the problem is that what that won't do is actually stop it from going over zero dB. So you're gonna find it, you're gonna start clipping or distorting, which is not a good thing. It means that it's going over the maximum volume and you get that horrible distorty kind of sound. So using a limiter does the same sort of thing, but instead of it letting it go over that sound, it actually stops it at the stop at the top. It's called often called a brick wall limiter because it's like it hits a brick wall. So it'll sort of push the peaks down and it will bring the rest of the volume up. Now you need to be super careful with these as we'll show you in a minute because you can very quickly, even though it's just stopping it there, you can still get some distortion with a limiter. So let's get started though. Stop talking and start playing around and doing our mastering process. All right, we've got all of our plugins off. Let's go to one of the loud sections of our track and just play it back and hear what it's sounding like at the moment without any processing. Left for you say you're trying this time things will be so you can see there that our meter is you know popping up into the just in the bottom of the yellow there so it, it's all right at the moment but it's not the maximum sort of volume we won't we want we don't want it all the way up all the time because it's not that sort of track we want some dynamic range here but we do want to make it a little bit louder so the first thing i traditionally do is i turn on my peak limiter and i start working out how much limiting that i need here now you might say well shouldn't you do your compression and your eq and that sort of thing first in fact what i should do is actually move this limiter to the very bottom so to do that I hit edit and then you can actually move around the order of your different plugins. So I'm going to make sure that the limiter is at the bottom, which it's now not, there it is at the bottom. And if we tap on this one, you've got a few options here. You've got your attack for your limiter and then you've got your release. Now attack tells it how quickly the limiter is going to kick in when it hits the threshold that we have set here, which for a limiter is basically at zero dB. And this one doesn't have its own threshold. So you just have to assume that it's pushing it all the way up there. So how quickly will it, will it kick in there when it hits that level? And then how quickly will it release as well? So the attack and release, you can play around with these. I normally set this around about there and then the release time I'll, I'll make reasonably fast because we don't want it sitting up there and having too much limiting going on too much. But what I'll do now is let's hit play and I'll dial in this pre-gain up a little bit and we'll see or we'll hear the difference in this track. It's different you'll see But I've heard this all before Action speak louder to me all right, now hopefully you heard that when I turned that pregain up too much, we got that pumping effect. So it's not actually distorting or clipping, but what it's doing, it's it's every time it's hitting that, the limiter is kicking in and it's dropping the volume. So if you ever get that pumping or that wavering effect, it means that you're hitting your limiter too hard. Now I mentioned before, we can also clip and distort with a limiter, even though it's a brick wall one, and that's by turning this all the way up. So let's go a little bit nuts and show you what not to do with a limiter. All of my time, I don't have much of it left for you say time to consider. So yeah, as soon as you start playing around up in that range, it's not going to work. So let's bring ourselves back down to zero dB and you can there you can see that sort of readout that you get there. Again, the, the display on here is not that good. So it's showing the limiting amount there, but it's not sort of doing it in real time on a graph like you would in a real limiter. So these are some of the limitations, pardon the pun, that you have with the limiter here in GarageBand. Let's hit play again. Others hurt too. All of my time we'll hit stop there so i'm thinking around about there is probably where we're going to be for this around that 4.5 so if we come in here let's just look at our metering here now on the iphone you won't have this top meter you'll just have the meter here but you don't really have a master meter and you can't really do you know finite things so you're going to have to use your ears to make sure it's sounding right let's hit play here all of my time i don't have much of it left and let's turn the limit for off. you Say you're trying this time and back Things on. will be different, you'll see But I've heard now, in some of those louder sections, it's probably almost a little bit too much. So you might even drop this back and kind of less is more. One of the rules of, of mastering is to do no harm. If your song sounds worse after mastering than it did before mastering, then that's not a good thing. You want to make sure that it is going to sound better than it did before. So... 
realistically, if that's all you did, if all you did was brought your track in here and used the peak limiter to lift up, if you're happy with everything else about your mix, there's absolutely no reason why you now need to start playing around with other things because you say, well, that, that's exactly what I wanted to. I mixed it. And if you mix it well, you shouldn't have to do much in the mastering process. But we do have some other options that we have in here with mastering, which is what I'm going to show you now. So when you're mastering, you can literally use any other plugin you like, any of the default built-in plugins here in GarageBand or any audio unit extension plugins that you've bought and downloaded yourself. But what some of the typical ones that folks tend to use when mastering is compression and EQ. So I'm just going to show you some of the moves that you may want to make with a master using the compressor and the EQ. So let's jump in and take a look now. So first of all, let's turn on our compressor and I'm actually going to turn off the limiter while we do this. So our compressor is going to add some compression. Now, if you need to learn about compression or you're not 100% sure on that, there's another video which I recommend that you check out first to learn about compression. Once again, you can pause, go and learn about the compressor and then come back here. But basically, compression is going to push down the peaks and then bring up the volume of everything else. So it's similar to a limiter, but you have a little bit more control here with your compressor. So what you may want to do is do some light compression and then some light limiting to make sure that you're not over compressing anything or overdoing it, but you're getting the best volume and still maintaining the best sound. So what I'll tend to do is dial my ratio into something like two to one here and then put a fairly slow attack. Now we don't have a release on this compressor. You can use another compressor that will have a release, but I'll put a fairly slow attack, leave the gain around the middle there and I'll mix it in 100% here or you can reduce the mix of your compressor if you're finding it's compressing too much. Now what I'm gonna do is hit play and then then I'm going to use my threshold and start dialing this down and just seeing if a little bit of compression is going to help the overall sound of this mix. Let's do that now. Hear what you say, but we've been down this road and you threw it away. Time to consider others hurt too. of my time so you can see there that as I'm playing with the threshold coming down, as I'm turning the gain up, it's impacting the overall volume there. And I also play with the ratio a little bit there. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. Like most things in music, you can't just say, what are the settings I dial into my compressor? You need to experiment and play with what's going to work for the song. So I'll continue working on this. And then if uh, we'll leave it as we have it there now, if we turn our limiter back on with our compressor, let's just play back and make sure that we're not peaking now. I don't have much left for you. So don't take all of my time I don't have much of it left For you say so it's sounding good. You can see by the meter there that we're getting it up to around zero dB, even though we don't have numbers on our dial here. So we're getting a decent level of volume. If we turn both of these off and play it. Hey, you're trying this time. Things will be different, you'll see. And then turn both of them back on. But I've heard this all it's not making a whole lot of difference. And in fact, we can probably bump this up a little bit more to something like five. Oh, before action speak louder to me. But what it is doing is it's making sure our volume is going to be competitive. Because if you've ever exported a GarageBand song, it will boost the volume up using normalization, but that's only going to take your peak volume. So the louder source up to zero dB. What this is now doing is it's pushing those loud ones down and bringing everything else up to make it competitive overall. So that's our compressor. Let's jump in now and take a look at the EQ. Now, instead of using the Visual EQ, what I'm actually going to do is use a free plugin called LRC5 here. So I'm going to tap here, go to Audio Unit Extensions, and scroll down to LRC5. Now, you can download this for free. I've got videos about this here on the channel. Once again, there'll be one link there and down in the description. So what we can do now is tap on this, and we've got a five-band parametric EQ. And the reason I use this for mastering as opposed to the Visual EQ is that we've got a lot more control over what we can do here. And I go into detail about that in the other video. So we could actually just make some really small adjustments to our EQ here. So if we come in and start playing this track, what I'll do is I'll find a few frequencies that I think might need a little bit of a cut or a boost, and then we'll see what we can do with the EQ here. Don't take all of my time. I don't have much left for you. So don't take all of my time. 
I don't have much of it left For you say you're trying this time Things will be different, you'll see But I've heard this all before Actions speak louder to me All right, so I've done very small moves here. So you can see here, I've got to move, we'll select just one of them. I've got to move down here at, what's that, around about 73 hertz. Um, I'm just sort of pulling down a little bit there on some of those really low frequencies. And it was just something sticking out, it's probably more around there. Something just sticking out there that was sounding a little bit sort of boomy with some of that bass. I just wanted to move a bit of that. And then I've just increased up the top here. Now these are like the air frequencies I've talked about before. So I've just had a little shelf up the top here to give the overall song a little bit more air and a little bit more presence up the top there. So that's just a couple of moves you could make. You can do anything in here. The thing to keep in mind is to keep the moves small. If you're doing things that are like, you know, five and six and seven dB, then you probably need to go back to your mix and make your changes there. Your mastering EQ should only be small amounts generally. And again, there's no rules, but as a general guideline, making smaller tweaks is just going to slightly improve your track and make your overall master sound better. So there's a heap more that you can do. And again, as I've always said, there's no rules to this sort of thing, but these are some of the things that you want to consider is you want to get your volume up to a competitive level, but maintain some of that dynamic range. So you don't want to squash it. You want to make some of those EQ moves if you need to, and you may want to add a bit more compression. You can use things like reverb in your mastering process, and you can use some, some like light distortion and some harmonics and all sorts of other plugins. But these are the basics of getting your master done. So Let's just play back and take a listen to this without any of these plugins. It sounds like this. And, threw it away. and now if we turn on the plugins that we've added here, not our EQ, our LRC. Hey, time to consider. Then it's just, it's sounding more presence. It's got that boost. Now keep in mind, there's something to really important to keep in mind. We hear louder things as better. So sometimes you'll just have made it louder, but you haven't actually improved the sound. So be really careful that you don't just make it loud and then you go back and listen to it and do an A-B test and you're like, actually, I kind of prefer, even though it's quieter, I prefer the other one. So do some adjustments. The only way that you're going to get good at this is to keep trying and keep learning and keep doing different things. But there you go. That is the way that I approach a master here in GarageBand iOS. Now, the last thing that we need to do here is once we're happy with our final master there is we come back to my songs now it's just called my song here but i'll change this to you'd normally call it whatever your track name is and then master and then you can use the exact same process we used at the start by selecting tapping and sharing and then resharing this as a high quality uncompressed wave file so that you can then use that mastered wave to release to spotify apple music itunes uh, soundcloud youtube whatever you want to do with your final track so there you go mastering here in GarageBand ios so there you go. Whilst GarageBand may not be the ultimate mastering platform, it is free and it is easy to get started and master your own tracks. If you'd like to learn some more about mastering, there's two more videos linked down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping in the top right corner there. And I'll see you on the next video.